Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are in a surface car driving through the Venus Mountains toward the Space Patrol testing grounds. As Happy carefully guides the car over the dangerous road, they're unaware that a container of sleeping gas hidden in the car is expelling a dangerous vapor. Wow, I've seen these cliffs from the air, but I never realized how high they really are. Mm-hmm. From this road, it's a thousand foot drop to the bottom of the gorge. Yeah, I wonder why I'm so drowsy. I'm a little drowsy, too. Oh. Hey, come on, there's a patch of fog or something ahead of us. It's a turn of the fog. Happy, look out, we're heading for the edge. Huh? Hey. We're, we're going over the cliff. We'll return in just a moment with today's Space Patrol adventure, The Immortal Brain. <laughs> Gang, it kept coming closer and closer, faster and faster. And now it's here. Yes, the day is here, right smack on top of us. The last day we can offer you the Space Patrol Projectoscope. The Projectoscope, the six-inch rocket that flashes on and off like a real signal light. The Projectoscope. That blue and yellow plastic rocket that throws a steady beam of light like a real flashlight. The projectoscope. The sleek, streamlined rocket that flashes 24 different pictures on the wall, one at a time. Pictures of Buzz, Corey, and Cadet Happy in four exciting space patrol adventures. Fun galore. But gang, don't wait. This is the last time we can offer you the projectoscope. Just buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then with your name and address... Send 35 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Immortal Brain. Long before the era of space travel, electronic computers proved their worth. With lightning speed, they foretold the path of rockets and predicted the weather. In the 30th century, these amazing electronic brains supply information and guidance for government leaders and all major industries. The giant government computer on Terra helps keep the economy of the United Planets in balance. Although most privately owned electronic brains proceed in an honest manner to supply special information to business firms, one famous computer in Venus City, known as Future Incorporated, is operated mostly for the benefit of unethical investors by Anton McDermott. Right now, McDermott is in his office talking to a new client, Brandon Fergus. Well, you finally come around to subscribing to our service, Mr. Ferguson. Well, I don't see how I can afford not to, Mr. McDermott. My competitors have been beating me at every turn. And at this rate, I'll be broke in six months. Five months. What's that? Our computer gives you five months. Of course, now that you're using the information given you by Future Incorporated, that prediction will be revised. More optimistically, I'm certain. Well, I certainly hope so. You charge enough for your predictions. You'll find it pays, Mr. Fergus. Your competitors have. Yes, I know. I thought I was getting all the information I needed from this uh, government computer. Well, that gives you the overall trends in industry and business. But we give you specific predictions for your own particular interests. Mm. Now, however, the government computer is excellent for the overall operations of the Space Patrol, for example. Space Patrol? You've had an unpleasant experience with the Space Patrol, Mr. Fergus. Well, I, I had a nice, profitable arrangement on Jupiter last year. Commander Corey broke it up. He said it was illegal. Was it? Uh, perhaps. But Corey just better not trust me again, that's all. You're not interested in my trouble, will you? Well, let me give you a check for the first three months. Mm, fine, Mr. Fergus. Hmm. What's that you've got there? One of those new check projectors? Yes, yes. It's shaped like a regular pen. See? And set the figures by turning those small rings on the shaft, I, I see. Mm-hmm. Then when you press the button on the end, the numbers in my signature are projected onto this specially sensitized check paper. Uh, like this. Say, that's 
Quite a gadget. Uh, may I look at it? Of course. Oh, here's your check. Oh, thank you. I'm sure this will be a profitable association for both of us. Oh, I hope so. You must have inherited your father's brains. Mr. Fergus, I consider that a very high compliment. Well, I mean it. Well, I'll be running along now, Mr. McDermott. All right, Mr. Fergus. You'll be getting your first report on Future Incorporated in about three days. Oh, uh, Mr. McDermott, you understand now that I don't want to get mixed up in anything illegal. Of course not, Mr. Fergus. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Mr. McDermott, are you free now? Oh, yes, Gilson. Fergus just left, and he signed up. Good. I was amused at something he said. He told me I must have inherited my father's brain. <laughs> he only knew how close he came to the literal truth. You mean your father's brainograph records? Yes, all his ideas on economics, all his vast knowledge, scanned by brainograph and recorded on tape. No wonder we've got the best computer service in the solar system. Our computer can draw upon my father's memories and intelligence, just as though he were alive. Now, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Mr. McDermott. Something's gone wrong. What do you mean? You know that problem you asked me to feed into the computer regarding the probable government plans for a new city on Saturn? Yes, I've already bought most of the land in that area. Well, what's the trouble? I fed in some new data from the government, and our computer keeps teletyping nonsense. The same meaningless phrase over and over. What is it? Well, here's the tape from the computer, sir. Cancel G-O-C. Cancel government operations computer? Machine sort of hesitates and, and makes a few false starts. Then out come these letters every time. It doesn't make sense. Why would the computer tell us to cancel out a whole source of information? Its main source, the government operations computer. Wait. The machine only has a vocabulary that we've built into it. Maybe it's trying to tell us something it hasn't words for and is using the nearest substitute. Hmm? Cancel. Cancel. Cancel might mean more than just eliminate data. It might mean destroy. Literally destroy. Oh, but that's fantastic. Yes, of course. That's it. The machine is trying to tell us that the government computer is recommending a change of plans about the location of the new city on Saturn. But that would ruin us. Of course. Our computer's answer is to destroy the government computer. Hmm. Well, that's out of the question, of course. What's this thing on the desk? Oh, that's Ferguson's gadget, a check projector. He must have left it. Gilson, you've got to go to Terra and destroy that computer. Immediately. But, Mr. McDermott... I... There's no other way out. And I know how it can be done. Straight down this aisle, Happy, behind relay panel number 68B. That's where the trouble started. Yes, sir. Gee, this computer's a complicated thing. It'll take weeks to repair the damage, even if we put every available technician on the job. Here. See that small black metal case? Uh, this one? What does it do? It's not a part of the computer, Happy. It was put here deep inside the control unit wiring to sabotage the computer. That little box blew out this whole big machine? Yes. Well, who would want to do a thing like that? What would they gain? Well, it's hard to see how anyone could profit from it. This is the work of an extremely irrational and vicious mind. Well, you mean somebody really blew his rockets? Mm -hmm. and paralyzed the largest, most important electronic brain in the solar system. Not only paralyzed it, but burned out memory banks, relays, and indicating instruments. Somebody must have a grudge against everybody. He succeeded in slowing down a lot of important projects. The economy of the whole United Planets will be thrown out of balance. We've got to find another computer. There's only one big enough to handle the job. Which one is that, sir? Future Incorporated in Venus City. It's not time to investigate the company, but they have an amazing record for correct predictions. It's run by Anton McDermott. McDermott. Uh, that name sounds familiar. Anton is the son of the late Samuel McDermott, the famous economist and historian. Oh, uh, were you a friend of his? Yes. Never knew his son, Anton, very well. But Samuel McDermott and I were working on an idea together. What was the idea, sir? Well, you know it's possible to make a brainograph recording of a person's thoughts and memories. Yes, sir. I persuaded Mr. McDermott that he should leave such a record behind. It would be much quicker than writing books. In the case of a genius like McDermott, it would preserve thousands of ideas that would otherwise be lost. Mm -hmm. Our plan was to devise some way to transfer these ideas and facts to the memory bank of a computer. And that way we could benefit from a brilliant man's thinking ability, even after he passed away. At least we thought we could preserve part of it. Gee... McDermott told me he'd found a solution, but I was called away on a mission about then. When I returned, it was too late. Well, hadn't he written it down? No. At least no mention of it was ever discovered in his papers after his death. 
His son, Anton, turned all of his father's notes over to the government. It's sure too bad he couldn't have lived a little while longer. Eventually, someone will solve the problem. But right now, we've got one of our own. We'll blast off for Venus City and see if young McDermott will let the government leave. Commander, anything I can do for a friend of my father will be a pleasure. I appreciate that, Mr. McDermott. But you're doing a public service, not just a personal favor for me. Do you have any idea what motive was behind this, this sabotage of the government? Computer? Not the slightest. We haven't any clue as to who wrecked a terror machine, except that he obviously knows quite a bit about computers. I certainly hope you catch the vandal, Commander. We will. McDermott, you'll receive some tape-recorded data for your computer's memory banks in a few hours. Then you can go to work on our Saturn problem. Excellent. Or will you be going back to terror right away? First, I've got to visit the Space Patrol testing grounds outside Venus City. Cadet Happy and I will drive over in the morning. I don't envy you the trip. I understand it's a nerve-wracking ride over that winding mountain road. Yeah, it would be easier to take an atmosphere ship, but as long as we have to be here on Venus another day, I thought I'd go the slow way and enjoy the scenery. Well, then I'll see you again before you blast off for terror. Yes. Thanks a lot, Mr. McDermott. Don't venture it. Mr. McDermott. Mr. McDermott. Yes, Gilson, what is it? Something really is wrong with the computer this time. I think we overloaded it. What? You'll pardon my saying so. I, I don't think we should circuit in your father's memory banks. I, I think they're confusing the other circuits. How could they? Well, by introducing irrelevant data. Four times it came through. Cancel C-I-C-S-P. There's no significance to those letters as far as the machine's concerned. It's gibberish. It's very improbable. They would have produced the same letters four times in a row unless it did have some meaning. C-I-C-S-P. What meaning could it possibly have, sir? Wait a minute. Let's try grouping the letters differently instead of running them all together. C I C S C I C S P S P Space Patrol perhaps. Oh, but what about the other letters? C I C C I C Commander in Chief. Cancel Commander in Chief Space Patrol. Remember, cancel is also the computer's word for destroy. It means we're to destroy Commander Corey. It's uncanny. How does the machine know Corey? It doesn't. It deals with relationships of ideas. And remember, my father knew Corey. The idea of Corey is in my father's memory bank. But they were friends. Why would your father want Corey destroyed? Gilson, think a minute. That computer doesn't want anything. It's solving a problem. The problem's a cold, logical, mathematical problem. My father wouldn't have hesitated to wipe out Corey's chessmen in a friendly game of chess. Now the problem is how to preserve Future Incorporated. And the answer is destroy Corey. Right. But, Mr. McDermott, we can't get rid of Corey. Yes, we can. Tomorrow morning, Corey and that cadet are going to drive a surface car over the mountains to the Space Patrol testing grounds. It won't be hard to find out what car they're taking. We can conceal a cylinder of sleeping gas under the seat. Sleep gas? Yes. Imagine what will happen on that mountain road if they get drowsy at the wheel. But the space patrol's sure to find the wrecked car. And even if it's smashed to pieces, the sleep gas cylinder's likely to be found. Yes, yes, you're right. And they'd know it wasn't an accident. Then we've got to make the space patrol suspect somebody else. With whom? Wait, I've got it. What? This gadget Fergus left here, his check projector. And Fergus has a grudge against Corey. That's our answer, Gilson. If they find Corey, they'll blame Fergus. Come on. Commander, this is sure terrific scenery. I didn't realize these mountains near Venus City were so big. And we've always flown over them before. It takes a view from a surface car to make you really appreciate them. Well, the engineers who built this road sure did a great job. Yeah, they certainly did. Wow. And that would be some drop, especially along here. Mm -hmm. Over a thousand feet. Oh. oh, excuse me, sir. That sleep I had last night, I wonder why I'm so drowsy. You want to stop and let me drive a while, huh? Oh, no, sir. It's only a few more miles to testing ground, sir. How you making all right? Well, I'm a little drowsy myself. Uh, Commander, there's a patch of fog in the highway up at the next turn. Come huh? on. Oh, I don't see. Uh, oh, yes, I do. It's even foggy inside the car. Happy, look out. We're heading for the edge. Huh? We're going over the cliff. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, talk about a putt-putt. Just listen to this jet cycle.
Yes, it's just a putt-putt, because all it has in it is ordinary fuel. But pour in some super fuel, and you get a super start, like this. Wow, that jet cycle is supercharged now. Yep, supercharging takes just one thing, super fuel. Now, to really get going, you have to get supercharged, too. And gang, here's Buzz Corey's way of doing it. He eats the super cereals, rice checks and wheat checks. Good? Why, man, they're so good, you grab the biggest bowl you can find, you shake in checks, pour on milk, sprinkle on sugar, and that's it. You've got a bowl of the swellest tasting cereal in the universe. So try rice checks or wheat checks today. And remember, inside of every package, there's a mysterious magic space picture. The super cereals that help to supercharge you, rice checks, wheat checks. And now, back to today's Space Patrol adventure, The Immortal Brain. Anson McDermott has secretly perfected a means of using the brainograph tape recordings of his late father's vast knowledge in his electronic calculating machine. When the machine revealed Commander Corey was an obstacle to the success of McDermott's dishonest schemes, the inventor determined to destroy the commander and throw suspicion on one of McDermott's own clients, Brandon Fergus. Knowing Buzz and Happy were to travel from Venus City to the Space Patrol testing grounds in a surface car, McDermott concealed a sleeping gas cylinder in the car, together with a check projector belonging to Fergus. Now, on a dangerous curve in the Venus Mountains, Happy has drowsed at the wheel and is heading for a thousand-foot drop into the gorge below. It can't stop, sir. We're going over. Let go of the wheel, Happy. I'll take it. We didn't go over. The rear wheel's caught on the boulder. Hanging right over the edge. How are we going to get out of the car? We'll climb into the back and out the rear doors. All right, sir. Wow. Look down there. We had a close call on Move carefully now. I don't know how long this car's going to hold. Okay, sir. Hey. What's the matter? Look, look what's in the back part of the car. A cylinder. Sleeping gas. What? Oh, here it is, sir. It must have been hidden back there and got bounced out when we hit the boulder. Oh, it's got a time release on it. That's why we were getting drowsy. I shut off the valve. And what's this? What? On the floor back here, sir. It, it looks like a pin of some kind. No, it's a tiny atomo light. Well, let's see well, it's a check projector. Well, who does it belong to? It's something a Venus City Space Patrol lab can tell us when they take it apart. Yeah. Then we'll know who put the sleep gas cylinder back here. Our trip to testing grounds is off, Happy. We're going back to Venus City. I'll space the phone for a car. Mr. McDermott, here's the an extract from that data we got from the government computer memory tape. Well, let's see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good, Gilson. Print it up in government regulation form, just as I ordered. You want me to take it to Fergus? No, uh, he's coming here to the office in a few minutes. I'll give it to him then. Oh, very good. Uh, Mr. McDermott, will it be absolutely necessary to go ahead with the rest of our plan? You mean doing away with Fergus? Yes. And of course, Gilson. We know that Corey and the cadet left Venus City for the testing grounds on schedule. That means that by now the sleeping gas has worked, and they've lost control of the surface car. But isn't the check projector enough evidence against Fergus? It might be. But if Fergus is later found with information that he could have stolen from Corey, we'll provide a motive. However, if Fergus is given a brainograph test, he could prove his innocence. So, the only alternative is to give Fergus top secret data and then do away with him. But how do we do that? When Fergus sees this information, he'll blast off for Saturn to take advantage of it. When he's out in space, his air supply will fail. We'll see to that. And the Space Patrol will have an open and shut case. Exactly. If they find his ship, they'll find the secret data on him. Their only possible conclusion is that Fergus stole it from Corey. Oh, that's probably Fergus now, Edmund. Yes, sir. The Venus lab came up with something very interesting, Happy. On the check projector? Yes, they cut it apart and projected the signature cell under ultraviolet light. Whose is it? Belongs to Brandon Fergus. Brandon Fergus? Yes, I had some trouble with him several months ago on Jupiter. He was involved in an illegal transaction. I stepped in and broke it up. Well, then it must have been Fergus that planted the sleep gas cylinder in the surface car. Oh, it looks that way. I can't figure out a motive. As far as I know, Fergus has been sticking close to the law lately. 
Either he holds a grudge a long time or he's planning something new and want to be out of the way. Well, he sure came close to succeeding. We'll make sure he doesn't come any closer. I've assigned some men to trace Fergus. When they locate him, they'll let me know. Then you and I will find out. Are you sure about this, Gilson? Positive. Commander Corey was seen coming out of the Venus City Space Patrol headquarters. Could we have missed? You did take the surface car that you put the sleeping gas cylinder in? Yes, but the car didn't go over the cliff. It was brought back to Venus City. Damaged, but not badly smashed up. This puts us in the spot. Well, we've got to get rid of Fergus before Corey questions him. But what about Corey? I'll have to get rid of him later. The important thing now is to get rid of Fergus. Let's get to his spaceship right now. I just checked with Spaceport Operations Commander. Fergus's ship is on blast off ramp 27. Good, half. According to one of our agents, Fergus has left his apartment, so he should be here at the spaceport soon. I wonder where he's going. I don't know, Happy. He must have decided to leave Venus City within the last few hours. He'd made an appointment with the doctor for a day after tomorrow and then canceled it. Hmm. Well, then something must have Happy. come up. And... There he is, making his way through the crowd. Where, sir? He's heading toward gate six. Let's follow him. But keep well behind him. He may be planning to... Ah, that ought to do it, Mr. McDermott. The air supply should fail about two hours after blastoff. Fine, Gilson. By then, Fergus ought to be so far from Venus that no help could reach him. Well, let's get out of the ship and get back to the office, sir. I'd hate to be caught here. Mm, all right. Well, now we've got to figure out a way... A way... What is it? Look, the starboard viewport. Somebody's coming toward the ship. It's Fergus. What do we do? Oh, don't get excited, Gilson. I'll tell him I learned some new information. Yeah, but what are you going to tell him? It won't matter. You'll never have a chance to check the truth. Gilson, what's the matter? Who's following Fergus? The Space Patrol. Yes, Corey and his cadet. We've got to get out of here. Wait. This is a chance to simplify our whole problem. Come on, Gilson. Get into one of the aft compartments. He's going up the ladder into his ship, sir. Hadn't we better hurry? All right, Hadn't. But he can't last off until he checks with Venus Space Patrol. No. It doesn't look as though we were going to meet anybody here. No. Evidently, Fergus has been working alone. All right, Hap, up the ladder into the ship. Yes, sir. Now, just a minute, Fergus. Don't close that hatch. Uh huh? What's that? We're coming in. We, uh, we want to talk to you. Why, uh, Commander Corey, I haven't seen you for almost a year. Yes, but I've got something here that belongs to you. Oh, it's my check projector. I thought you might explain how it happened to be in a surface car. I was driving to the testing grounds outside of Venus City. Surface car? Why, really, Commander, I don't know what you're talking about. I lost a check gadget recently, but I haven't the slightest idea how it got into your surface car. Then I'll have to ask you to come along with me for a brainograph test. Now, see here, Commander, I've important business to attend Search to. Search him, Happy. Yes, sir. But well, this is outrageous. I assure you I've done nothing against the law since our last... Uh, dispute. And you have no right to hold me here. He doesn't have any weapons, sir. Just this uh, identification folder and some documents. I'll take them, Happy. Thanks. Now, see here, Commander. I resent this. And believe hold me... Hold it, Fergus. How did you get this? Why? This is government information, top secret. And it's an official document form. So you were going to Saturn, were you? Where did you get this information? I, I... Perhaps I can explain, Commander. Get your hands up to that. You too, Commander. I make Dermot. I warn all of you. Any movement, I'll use this ray gun on you. Gilson, watch him closely, especially Corey. Yes, Mr. McDermott. I don't get this, McDermott. What's the idea? I'll tell you, Commander. This greedy fool Fergus had nothing to do with the attempt on your life in the Venus Mountains. And I planned it. You did? Why? Because my electronic computer informed me that you were the most dangerous obstacle to my success. You can't be serious. Furthermore, it informed me that the government computer on Terra should be put out of commission. Then you sabotaged the Terra calculator. That's right. My calculator also determined that if you remained alive, the space patrol would probably discover that I destroyed the Terra machine. So you put the sleeping gas in my surface car. Yes, but that plan failed. So I'll have to be sure that this time I succeed. I'm going to do away with Fergus and also you and your cadet right here in Fergus's spaceship. McDermott, I can't understand this. Your father and I were friends. He was a great man, a brilliant man. The kindest man I've ever met. <laughs> well, that's rich, Corey. Do you realize that it was my father's decision that you should be eliminated? That's impossible. Do you remember those brainograph tapes? The idea you and he were working on to transfer those tapes to the memory banks of calculating machines? Yes, but he passed away before we could... Not quite, Corey. He told me the process. I'm the first man in history to add the contents of a human brain to an electronic thinking machine. 
And it's ironic, isn't it, that my father, your friend, should decide that you should be destroyed. That's very interesting, Mr. Thomas. But tell me, did you transfer all of your father's brainograph tapes to your electronic calculator? Of course not. Just the important parts. The facts, his reasoning processes. That's all I wanted to know, McDermott. Get Gilson happy. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. Give me that gun, Gilson. Good work, Captain. Keep them covered. Yes, sir. All right, McDermott, on your feet. Oh. Let's oh. take him to headquarters, Happy. Yes, sir. McDermott, when you put your father's electronic calculator together, you forgot one thing. What was that? Your father's brain wasn't merely a collection of facts. That's all you preserved. You threw away the important qualities. Sympathy, kindness, and the love for humanity. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course you don't. McDermott, you can build a substitute for the human brain, but you'll never build a substitute for the human heart. In just a moment, an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Come in. You wanted to see me, Commander? Oh, yes. Come in, Captain Tupa. Captain, you understand, don't you, that today is the last time we can offer the gang on Earth a Space Patrol projector scope? Yes, sir, I do. Then be sure to mention that when you talk to them on the radio today. I don't want anybody to get left without one. Now, look at this projector scope I have here. Did you ever see a better model of my rocket? Never, sir. Take a look at how easy it flashes signals. Perfect. Look at the steady beam of light it throws. A real flashlight in the shape of a rocket. And, of course, it's also a film projector. It flashes pictures on the wall. Pictures of Hap and me and four of our greatest space patrol adventures. Say, what's that, Commander? Oh, my radio beam relayer is on. The boys and girls have been listening to us all the time. Hi, gang. Glad you're listening in because... Now you already know that I want you to send in right away for a projector scope. Remember, this is the last time we can make this offer. That's right, gang. To get a projector scope, do this. Buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then, with your name and address, send 35 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 35 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686. Six, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are in the basement of a museum near some prehistoric fossil pits on the Martian desert, searching for valuable gems. These gems look real to me, Commander. They are, Happy. I think we've found the man who smuggled them in. Uh, hey, Commander, what's that? Hey, where you are, both of you. Now, Commander, you may have found me, but this machine will keep you from capturing me. Well, what kind of a machine is it, Commander? It's a disintegrator for removing rock from fossils. That's right, and it will destroy anything, Cadet. Do you understand anything? That means no one will ever find a trace of either of you. Join us again next week for the mystery of the Martian fossils, when we check... Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present another exciting adventure on Space Patrol! (laughs) Special bulletin for boys and girls in Cincinnati, Ohio, Bridgeport, New Haven, and Hartford, Connecticut, and Providence, Rhode Island. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it. The Ralston Rocket! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufeld speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting... Space Patrol! And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol has come to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.